welcome to gemchem now today's video is on nucleophilic substitution part 3 video and here we are going to deal with effect of the entering group that is we will consider the nucleophilicity of the nucleophile now before starting already two videos are uploaded in channel you can watch it i will keep the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video and if you are new to gemchem do not forget to subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates so let us start now what is nucleophilicity? It is the ability of a Lewis space to act as a nucleophile. That is, it will attack a substrate. And this nucleophile will have a negative charge on it. This is measured by relative rate of nucleophilic substitution reaction of different nucleophiles with a common substrate. So here, common substrate is taken and different nucleophiles are added to it in order to obtain the rate in which these nucleophiles get attached to the common substrate. Now for SN1 reaction, nucleophilicity do not matter as nucleophile is not involved in the rate determining step. So as we have seen in first video that in the rate determining step, there is only formation of carbocation and next the nucleophile gets added in SN1 reaction. So there is no contribution of nucleophile in this case Whereas for SN2 reaction, since the both attack and leaving of the group takes place at one step, so as a result, there is a matter that nucleophile is involved in the rate determining step. Next is that with good nucleophile, rate of SN2 reaction increases. As if the nucleophilic attack is nice, then the leaving group will easily go away and the rate of the reaction increases. The relative nucleophilicity of a nucleophile differs for different substrates. So, if you change the common substrate, then a particular nucleophile will have different rates of reaction for different substrates. Let us consider some examples to understand how nucleophilicity changes. What are the factors which enhances nucleophilicity or lets nucleophilicity to decrease in case of nucleophiles. So first is that this example where we take methanolysis of methyl iodide as standard reaction and it is taking place at 25 degrees Celsius. We will compare with addition of methanol and removal of iodide and this is our standard reaction and in other cases the nucleophile will be taken these given in the list. So if you can see here N is actually log of K nucleophile by KCH3OH and with this factor N it is actually the nucleophilicity factor. Nucleophilicity is basically related with transfer of a pair of electrons just as in case of a base. We have already seen acids and bases. What is the function of base? to transfer pair of electrons. Similarly, nucleophile also does that. But we have also learned that there is a basic difference between nucleophilicity and basicity which you should see if you have not known about this. I will give the link of that video in the description box as well as the i button present above this video. If you see here, as nucleophilicity is increasing, basicity is also increasing. See here 1.5 minus 1.3, 2.7, 3.45. So here what nucleophile is more basic? Here CH3COO minus is more basic and its nucleophilicity is also greater. So higher the basicity, higher the nucleophilicity. But this is not always the case. You have to remember that case varies depending on different factors. If we see this is particularly occurring for a nucleophilic substitution and electrons from the HOMO of the nucleophile, which is the highest occupied molecular orbital, goes to the LUMO of the electrophile. And first point holds true only when the same nucleophilic center is involved. What does it mean? If you see here, CH3COO minus. NO3 minus, similarly PHO minus, here the donor centers are oxygen. 
So here we can say that nucleophilicity decreases as the basicity decreases. Similarly, a nucleophile with a negative charge always has greater nucleophilicity than the corresponding conjugate acid. That is, if you consider here OH minus and water. Okay. So, here OH minus is our nucleophile, whereas H2O is its conjugate acid. So, as we go from OH minus that is charged to neutral, our basicity is decreasing on going to the conjugate acid. So, nucleophilicity will also decrease. Similar example is that NH2 minus and ammonia. Ammonia is less basic as well as less nucleophilic than NH2 minus. If we see for the next point, which tells us that in comparing the nucleophiles with attacking atom belonging to the same row of the periodic table, nucleophilicity is in order of the basicity. That is, if nucleophilicity is increasing, basicity will also increase. If you consider, suppose, this example, that is, R3, C minus, R2, N minus, and R, O minus, and F minus. What happens here? Here the nucleophilicity is decreasing in this way. Also the basicity is in decreasing in this way. As a result, here the nucleophilicity is in order with the basicity. Next is that the higher nucleophilicity of complex metal hydrides is attributed to the directional character of metal hydrogen bonds for which it can attack the carbon electrophile from farther away and the extent of overlap with orbital carbon undergoing nucleophilic attack is higher. Suppose you consider sodium hydride or lithium hydride. These are very poor reducing agent and here hydride ion is a strong base but it is a poor nucleophile because this hydride ion cannot be easily released and attack anybody. Whereas if you consider lithium aluminium hydride and sodium borohydride, these are good reducing agents as well as good nucleophiles. And this is due to the presence of a very directional character of this metal hydrogen bond for which it can attack the carbon nu electrophile very easily from a far place and the overlap after the nucleophilic attack is very nice. If we see the last important point in this case is that alpha effect. Nucleophilic centers which are directly bonded to an atom with one or more unshared pairs of electrons tend to be stronger nucleophiles. That is, if suppose you are having a nucleophile with an adjacent atom containing a pair of lone electrons. As a result of which, there will be stabilization of the transition state which is being formed. So, you will get a greater nucleophilicity for that nucleophile. If you consider, suppose, O H minus and O OH minus. So, when this O minus is donating its electron, the lone pairs present in the next O will stabilize this case. Whereas, when this is donating electrons, no one is there to stabilize it. One view is that the ground state of the nucleophile is destabilized by the lone pair lone pair repulsion, which are decreased as bond formation occurs in transition state. So, here also there is lone pair for minus and here also there is lone pair of OH. So, there is a repulsion which is decreasing when transition state is forming. So, as a result we can tell that this decrease of lone pair role pair repulsion helps in better nucleophilicity. Similarly, in MO terms we can say that a relatively higher energy of nucleophile HOMO participates in the bond formation. And another case we can say that 
adjacent electron pair can act to stabilize any charge deficiency in this transition state which we are talking about. And another reason can be that there is reduction of solvation due to the presence of this lone pair as a result the nucleophile can easily attack its target if you focus on this data that is these are the electrophiles and nucleophile is here ooh minus and oh so here ooh minus is more effective than oh minus for all these things and we can say that LUMA of this case, that is this cyano group, is much lower than the LUMA of this carbonyl group. As a result, the rate is greater for this one rather than this one. Okay, now we will focus on the last factor which we are going to deal with is that basicity is commonly related to the attachment with proton, whereas nucleophilicity refers to the attachment with carbon having negative charge suppose for saturated halides and why this is so because basicity always supports a hard acid whereas nucleophilicity supports for a soft acid so when you are talking about nucleophile nucleophile will try to attack a soft target and the nucleophile will itself be a soft one what is soft what is hard Soft means that the electron density will be dispersed throughout the atom. Whereas in case of hard, there will be all the electron density towards itself. That is, if you consider for this example, R O minus and R S minus. In case of S minus, there is 2p orbital next 3p orbitals also present right so here the electron density is dispersed whereas in case of oxygen there is 2p and the electron density is not much dispersed as a result of this here the electron density are much closely packed much close to each other and this makes it hard whereas since s minus is more loosely packed it makes is soft and the nucleophile here is soft and here the nucleophile is hard as a result of which we can say that this is a better nucleophile than this one similarly if you consider another example where we take cl minus br minus and i minus so this i minus will be the softest whereas the chlorine will be the hardest because here the electron density is more dispersed whereas for Cl- minus it is less dispersed. So from this we can understand the basic difference between basicity and nucleophilicity. For any more details in the difference between the basicity and nucleophilicity you can watch the video on basic organic chemistry. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present about this video. Now we will see certain kind of important part of this nucleophilicity and basicity. If you consider this reaction where we are taking Rx and we consider ethanolic casein. Now casein has two donor centers that is one can be donated from nitrogen another can be donated from carbon center right and when we consider another reaction where we add Ag Cn in ether then what comes is just the opposite where Rn is the attachment point and here is a triple bond and carbon is bearing a negative charge. So why this is so? First you have to understand that this part that is cyanide part has a nitrogen and a carbon. This nitrogen is actually a more electronegative center. Its electronegativity of nitrogen is much greater than electronegativity of carbon. And how this comes is already di discussed in periodic table video. You can watch it. I will give the link in the description box. So here, since its electronegativity is high, so electron density will be more towards it. And the electron density will be 
compressed towards it. So nitrogen can be considered as harder center whereas for carbon since its electron density is less so it can be considered as softer center being less electronegative. Now as a result of which there is difference in attack when different reagents are taken. If you consider this one Rx then this R is consisting of a delta positive charge whereas the halogen is considering a delta negative charge since it is electronegative in nature. And when you try to add this particular AgCN, AgCN to this Rx then what happens is that this Ag plus from here gets attached to this particular delta negative atom that is X minus. So Rx Ag formation occurs. As a result in the next step there is an easy release of X and we obtain R plus. And now it is very easy for nitrogen being a harder center to get attached to R plus. Here R is a hard center because it is having a positive charge so hard hard interaction is possible now. Hard hard interaction. As a result of which this reaction shows the bonding with the nitrogen. In the first case we are seeing that the carbon being soft center easily attacks the R center which is now soft because here electron density is present and in a dispersed manner and so here soft soft interaction is favored and in the next case in order to just change the reactivity we are just rotating the reagent as a result we are getting hard hard interaction and thus the reaction on the different center is occurring. So this much for today hope this was helpful thank you for watching do not forget to like share subscribe and comment. Thank you.